On the other side of a storm is the strength that comes from navigating through it. Raise your sail and begin. Just because you're struggling doesn't mean that you're failing. I think sometimes people equate struggling with failure. It, it's, it's not, it isn't even close. In fact, if you're struggling, it tells me that you're still in the game. We don't see these incredible opportunities first because every opportunity that you and I have is surrounded by a problem. I've never gone to an opportunity that I didn't have to go to the door of problems first. So the next time you have an obstacle, a, a difficulty, an adversity in your life, don't allow the crisis to numb you. Be alive, learn, feel, fail, learn. That's what it's all about if you want to make this difficult time a good time. I just want you to know that there's a hero within you. I know there is. And during this tough time, let the hero out. Let people see the best of you, your highest aspirations. You be the one who's the lifter and the encourager. Hi, Mark Cole here. In the 20 years that I have been working alongside John Maxwell, we have never seen a time as critical as this for values-based, people-centered leadership. John Maxwell says that crisis separates pretenders from players. Always has, always will. That's the purpose of the Leadership When It Matters the Most series. John Maxwell has felt that it is a time in a time like this that we need to be offering value and extending opportunity for people that want to make a difference. You see, crisis requires leadership that gives context, leadership that will step up and lead. Now, our goal is today in this time, as you spend a little time with us, that we add value to you so that you will multiply value to others. I hope that over the next few minutes, as John Maxwell shares a lesson that he has prepared for you right now, leadership, when it matters the most, that you will take note, that you will take hope, and that you will take charge. Today is the day that in this crisis, you can make a significant difference. Now, it's my pleasure to bring to you John C. Maxwell. Hey, it's my joy one more time to come to you as we do every Monday and uh, just share with you something that perhaps will help you right now. Again, with all the load that you're carrying and with the crisis that's here, um, I mean, we're all being moved, and, and uh, it, this is a difficult time. So I, I want to share with you something that I've really been thinking about for the last five or six days, and so I just developed a lesson on it. It, it, it comes from a, really it comes from a statement that I've said before that I just have always loved this saying, and that is that what we focus on expands. And, and that's where we're going to go today, because what you and I really do focus on uh, it begins to get bigger in our life. Just as, to be honest with you, the, what we don't focus on begins to shrink. And so what happens in a crisis is, of course, it causes great distraction. I mean, this country is distracted. And so distraction is just a, a word that basically means I kind of lose my way. It's, you know, it's, it's, I was talking to a businessman this week, and he was sharing with me, he said, he was a Christian, a faith person, and he said, I, I feel like Nehemiah, and I'm, I'm, I'm up there building the wall, and, and everybody's wanting me to come down and want to talk to me, and I keep saying, I'm building a wall, I cannot come down. Well, what happens is when we have traction, we're moving towards something. That's a beautiful thing, but when we get distracted, we, we begin to move away, which that, that's, that's not a good thing. I was reading a few days ago, I'm getting a lot of books in, just like probably you are. There are a lot of things that I'm able to do right now because of the crisis that normally I wouldn't be able to do to the degree. But Dan Ryland, he's a wonderful kid, and he's not a kid really, but when, when he came out of seminary in 1982, I was pastor at Skyline, and I literally mentored him, and, and he's been very close to me since then. And he wrote a book called Confident Leader, and I was reading it. It just came out. It's, it's, a, it's, one for, it's for a Christian audience, but 
but it's a very, very good book. And Entity has something that I just love that just fits right here on what we focus on and expands. He has an expression that, I, that I'm picking up now. In fact, after I use it about 10 times, it's going to be mine, not Dan's. And his expression is, pick your rabbit. Now, he takes that expression, pick your rabbit, from the, the expression that we've all heard, that if you chase two rabbits, you don't catch either one of them. And the reason you don't catch either one of the two rabbits you're chasing is because you can't focus on one. You get distracted. About the moment you're ready to get one, you say, well, maybe this one's a little bit closer. And so basically, we got two things we're chasing, and we end up with none of them. And so Dan would say to us today, hey, at times like this, you got to pick your rabbit. And uh, my father, by the way, I just saw him, just saw my dad last week. He's 98 and a half now and uh, had, had some good time with him. He's getting weaker. He's getting weaker. But about every time I think he's going to die and leave us, he, he comes back. So I call him Daddy Lazarus all the time because I mean, just I just say, Dad, you know, you just you just keep coming back. But my father, when we were kids, uh, whenever he had anything important for us, because my father was a big focus guy, he, he would look at us. He said, now, that was important. Uh, write that down. Write that down. And so we'd write it down. But, but he wasn't content with us just writing it down. He'd say, oh, and by the way, put that in front of you. In other words, he wanted us not only to write it down, but he wanted us to put it you know, on our mirror in our bathroom or somewhere where we could constantly see whatever we had just written down. In other words, write it down, put it before you. Well, what I want to talk about today is what do we put before us during this time? And what do we put behind us? You see, whatever we put before us, we focus on. What we ever put behind us, we don't focus on. It's not important. It's not a huge priority. And to be honest with you, what we put behind us will shrink, and what we put before us will expand and get clearer. So I'm going to throw some stuff at you here in the few minutes that I have. And I won't get through the whole lesson, but it's okay. Let's, 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 just, let's just talk about what do we put before us. And by the way, this is a choice we get to make. I get to choose what I put before me. I get to choose what I put behind me in the area of focus. So let's, let's talk about uh, number one, and these aren't in any order of priority. But number one, uh, put behind you what you can't do and put before you what you can do. Okay. I know. I know. That's, that's pretty simple. But I'm watching all kinds of people put before them what they can't do. They're, they're putting before them anxiety and worry and fear. They're, they're putting stuff in front of them that they absolutely, they're, they're, the questions they're asking, it, it, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can't control. And, and if you can't control it, if you can't do it right, now just, just put it behind you. It's okay. Put it behind you. Let's, let's talk about what we can do, what we can control. What are the things that I can do right now to make it? For example, well, you know, what I can't do, my list is simple. You know, I travel all the time. Guess what I can't do? I can't travel. I, I speak to crowds in proximity, you know, publicly all the time. Hey, I can't speak. You know, hey, I, I'm a leader. So what I do, I talk about the future a lot. I'm not talking about the future a lot right now. I'm kind of like everybody else. I, I'm not certain about some things. Now, I, I'm very clear, but, but I'm, I'm not certain about some things. I, there are just some things I right now I can't I, I can't do I, I I you know I told Mark who does a fabulous job overseeing all the John Maxwell Enterprise you know you know this isn't the great sell time for the for the the resources that we have that you know people they're, they're not focused now there are some lot of things I can't do okay I got that that's all behind me but but what can I do well I can do this today I can I can do I can get out of my comfort zone and do technology which I'm not good at all but I must confess even though I'm coming from my home. My friend Andrew, who's on my team, came over here to make sure that this thing really works because he knows how bad I really am. But, but what I can do is I, is I can come to you every Monday at noon through technology and, and hopefully give you some stuff that will really help you. But what I can do is I can write. In fact, I'm in my last week, my last week of writing what is my most important book. It's going to be called Change Your World, and it's all about transformation. How do you transform your community? How do you transform the people right around you? And I'm in my last week. I, and I, I can't sleep, to be honest with you. Yesterday, I got up at 3.30 because my mind was so full of ideas that I had to get up because I had to start writing because I was afraid I was going to lose them. And, and again, this morning, I, I was back up early. And, 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 and I, I can start to smell. I can start to see the light in the town. I can start to, I can start to smell some victory here. But, but that, I, I can do that. R right now, I can, 
Uh, I can add value to you. I, I can do my very best to do that. I can certainly take care of myself. I can take care of my family. Uh, I can uh, Right now, I can do some catch-up. I don't know about you, but I had a list. I had a stack in my office here of uh, probably 18, 20 books that I've just stacked up that I just hadn't gotten to. And, and so I'm slowly kind of working through that. So there, I, okay, these are some things I, I can do. And, and there are a lot more. I don't need to go into that. Here's what I want you to understand. There are two expansion quotes. If you really want life and the good stuff to get in front of you and get clearer and bigger, there are two expansion quotes I want to give you. I already gave you one. What you, what you focus on expands. The second one, though, is about courage. And I love this one as much as the other one. And this statement is that life shrinks or expands in proportion to your courage. Now, what's beautiful is if we can get these two statements side by side, and they really are basically the same statements, what this really saying to us, I love this, is the fact that if we'll put before us the important things, if we'll have courage to do them, all of a sudden, our world in front of us is just going to expand, get clearer, get better. And the world that is behind us will become less. You see, focus and courage are two incredible mobilizers, okay? They're, they just are. It's, 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 it's like, the, you know, if you were like I, when I was a kid, the story that I love, my favorite story as a kid, what my mother would read me was the little train who thought he could. It's a little about the little engine, or I guess the little engine who looked up and saw the big hill, wasn't sure he could, but he said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Focus, 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 kept going. He's got courage to try the hill. He's focused on the hill. He gets to the top, I thought I could, I thought I could, and off he goes. I love that story. In fact, I used to, I used to, kind of act it out. In fact, I remember going to my class one time and acting the whole story out. But the, the point of is, is if you have courage to focus on the important things in front of you right now, what can you and I do right now that expands? Number two, and this is kind of for maybe the business world, but, but I, I just say to you right now, um, okay, I got to contextualize this, but, but put behind you the sale and, and put before you adding value to people. Um, now, obviously, uh, we got to sell. We got businesses have to, you know, grow, and and businesses have to, you know, they got something that they have to exchange for that keeps them in, in business. I, I understand that, but but I, I I'll tell you what really centered me on this is uh, I I was thinking of the other day I was taking a walk and I was thinking about two questions um, that have to do with branding and uh, uh, what people think of us. And I thought of two questions, and I want to throw them out to you, and then I think it really helps me contextually with this statement. Here they are. Uh, one of the questions we ask ourselves is, um, what, you know, what do we want others to say about us? What, what I want others to say about me, hey, I, I want them to say I'm, I'm their friend. That's why what I tell you all the time. Hello, my name's John, and I'm your friend. I, why do I tell you that all the time? Because I want you to know that I'm your friend. I, so what do I want? What, what do I want you to say about me? I want you to say John's my friend. Okay. Well, same thing. What, what do you want them to say about your business? Right? Okay. That's the first question. The second question though, is what do they say about us? Now, those questions are almost very similar, but I'm telling you, there's a huge gap between what do I want you to say about me and what do you say about me? What, what do I want you to say about my company? And what do you say about my company? You see, one is the ideal, what I would hope you would do, but the other is the real. One's ideal, one's real. And what you say about me is really the effect I have on you. That's why I love this idea right now of adding value to people. Now, I try to do it every day. It's, it's truly, nothing's changed in my life. I, I just, I've always put adding value to people first. But, but what I want you to hear is very important. What they say about you is going to be greatly determined by how you and I take care of our clients and our customers right now. And I, I can tell you, I can tell you that if you're just put the people first and add value to them and, 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 and serve them and, and let them know and, and, and let them know that, that you just really care about them for people, I can tell you, you can close that gap between what you want them to say and what they do say about you. It's, um, it, it's, it's Zig Ziglar telling me when I was a kid, if you'll just add value to people, and if you'll put them first, they're going to take care of you too. And, and I, I bought into that then. I buy in it today. I buy into it today more than any other time. You see, as leaders, I think, I think I got this from, I think I got this from Kevin Myers, but as leaders, 
We want to constantly let our people know that we want more for them than we want from them. We want them to know that. So uh, this is the time. This is the time to really do that. I was talking to another um, uh, business. I was I was doing uh, one of our one of our legacy people. I was I was helping them with their company a little bit, and they're in, and and they're in real estate. And and they were sharing with me that um, that right now they're offering a lot of free just training classes to real estate people. And they decided to open up to anybody. I mean, if you're in our company, uh, you, you know, okay, it, it, this is free training. But if you're not in the company, it's okay too. And we just want to we want to share with them. And, and I asked them how that how it was going. And and as they were talking to me, they said, John, what's very interesting is people that are not in our company at all, they're coming back to us and they're saying, you want to help us more than the people in our company want to help us. You're thinking about us more than the people that the, in the company that we belong to. And, and and I thought to myself, how beautiful, what a beautiful way to position yourself, to where they look at somebody that's not even the real estate company that they belong to. And they're saying, well, they're helping me more than, than my own company's helping me right now. There's just something about, there's just something about right now, putting people right in front of you. Uh, for example, this is so simple, but every day I've done this throughout the, the entire month of April, every day, there are five different people. Every day I pick five different people to touch base with and, and, and just what can I do for you? Uh, how, how can I help you? Is there anything I can it, uh, add value to you in your life? And, and every day I go through a, a different a different group of five, and uh, it's not a long list. It doesn't take me that long. I, I I text them many times in the beginning, or or give them maybe a a quick call. But but it's just I'm just just wanting them to know, hey, I, you're in front of me. I'm I'm focused on you. Number three, put behind you your reactions and put before you your reflections. Um, crisis causes people to react like crazy. Okay. Wow. And, um, and I'm just saying to us right now, the easiest thing for anybody to do is react. But, but that brings you and me to no good leadership position at all. We, we, we need to, we need to reflect so we can respond. What we need is good responses based upon thinking and reflection and meditation and prayer. What, what we need is responses based on reflection, not reaction based on emotion. And, and um, I, I, can, I can still remember in the 2008 financial crisis, I, I, that was what kind of stimulated me to write the book, Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn. And, and I'm just saying to you right now, don't, don't, don't count your... Don't count your losses right now. Count your lessons. Just, just, just focus on focus on focus on the lessons. Because I'm here to tell you, if if we pull away every day and reflect and uh, observe and look around us and say, what am I learning from this? What what? How is this changing me? And is it changing me for the better? Am I swimming? Am I swimming upstream right now? Because if if you're changing for the better, that's exactly what you're having to do. Um, the other day, Mark, uh, Cole and I were, were having a conversation and he gave this to me and I thought it was so good. He said, John, we were talking about the business, the John Maxwell enterprise. He said, John, he said, uh, business will always follow values. So what he was basically saying, you know what, John, if your values are just good and strong, basically all your business practices, they just get in line with your values and they go down the values lane. But he said, but values will not always follow your business. And I thought that was so true because if, if you and I have our mind totally on business and, and uh, well, I'm losing money right now, and what should I do to the people and should I put them first? All, all of a sudden, those values, those values can get behind us. Keep the values in front of you right now and, and reflect on, on them and what they're doing. You see, during a crisis, Chris Hodges sent this to me. Oh, my gosh. Right, the, Maybe right at the very first of April. And I've had it on my desk and I've looked at it some but I haven't talked about it at all, but, but he sent this to me and I thought how true it is. There are, there are three zones during a crisis. And the first zone is, is where a whole bunch of people are living right now. It's the fear zone. And, and that's the reaction. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm saying put behind you your reaction. When, when, I, when I am in the fear zone, I am continually 
reacting. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm going to I'm going to the grocery store and I'm buying toilet paper. I don't need. I, I just am. That's that's who I am. I'm. You know. You know. What have you done today? I bought toilet paper today. That's that's, that's what I did. I'm I, I, I'm just absolutely fear based reacting. There's another zone in a crisis that we can go into if we want to, and that's the, that's the learning zone. That's the learning zone, and, and, and that's and that's where we that's where we reflect. That's where we say, okay. What am I learning in this period of time? I hope every one of you are making a list of the things that you're learning, the things that you're changing. I, I have a list. And um, every day during this crisis, my list gets um, a little bit clearer and, and, and it, it uh, is a little bit more impacting on me. I, uh, one of the things that I've really had to reflect on a lot and every day I'm just taking, I'm taking, what I'm doing during this time is I'm taking long walks. And, um, and one of the things I'm really reflecting on is that, uh, that this crisis is showing me is I don't have, uh, I don't have big enough margins in my life. That I, 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 to be honest with you, I love living on the edge. It's just, it's who I am. Okay. So that's a problem you can pray for for me. You know, in fact, I have, I moan my favorite quotes. If you're, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. Okay, so you got it. That's who I am. But, but, but during this time, I, I'm, I'm, I, I have time to really write my transformational book, Change Your World. And I'm able to go to a whole different level writing this book than I ever have any other time. I, I am going through this book now for the sixth time. And every time, I just take it up another notch, another notch. Charlie and I talked for an hour today. And and we're we're spending another week and and, and guess what we're I'm getting ready I'm getting ready to go through it for the seventh time. And the only reason I can do this I, I'm going to be able to I am going to be able to have a book that's going to help people really become transformational in their lives and their people's lives. But the only reason I'm going to have a book that has its depth and its uh, its gravitas that it has is because I have time. If I would have had my regular schedule, could I put the book out? Yes. Would it have been the book it is now? No. And the question I'm asking all of us right now, it's an important question is, what are we upping in our life? Right? What is getting better in our life? What, what, what bar are we living? What, what level of excellence are we getting up higher because we have a little bit more time maybe to do that? And what it's just taught me, okay, the lesson I'm learning is the fact that I just, I just need to... Um, I just need to get a little bit more margin in my life because there's another level of, of excellence that I could have if I had a, just a little bit of that margin. So there's the fear zone, which is reactive. I'm reacting in that zone. There's the learning zone. Okay, now I'm, I'm reflecting. And then there's the growth zone. And the growth zone is where I respond. And, and, and that's why I said if, if, you, if you react, it's fear-based. But if, if I reflect, then what I can do as a leader is I can begin to respond. I can get... I can give answers that have purpose. I can give answers that have meaning. I can give answers that have direction and depth to them. There's a maturity that I can have in this growth zone um, that's just going to help me to, to, to go to a whole new level. Um, see, see, here's what happens. Because of the crisis, there's a lot of uncertainty because they're focused on the outside. And a lot of people are asking themselves right now, I'm not sure my life is going to be better after this crisis. And I understand that because there are a lot of people that are going to take incredible financial hits. There are businesses that are going to close. I, I you know, I, I, I'm taking financial hits. Our, the John Maxwell enterprise, you know, I mean, we're, we're bleeding. We, we got that. We got that. But let me tell you something I'm absolutely sure of about this crisis. I can't, I can't, I can't talk about you, but I can't talk about me. I promise you. I'm going to be better coming out of this crisis. I am going to be better. That's very exciting to me. I'm going to grow on the inside to a whole different level than I've ever grown. And I just want to challenge every one of you. Um, don't count the days, make the days count. I just want to challenge all of us to, to, to put behind us the, reactions of everybody and you know i mean it's it's always the same thing 
what's great about watching the news now is you can skip a week, turn it on, and it's the same as it was last week. And nothing's changing. Or, or else we can put before us that I'm going to reflect and I'm going to, I'm going to get in the growth zone. I'm going to get in the learning zone during this crisis. Okay, number four. Um, number four, put behind you the difficulties and, and put before you the progress. I, I just love this thought. And I hope I could do a good job with it because one of the things a crisis does is a crisis takes you and me, all of us, out of automatic. And can I tell you something? We all love automatic. Automatic means I got it. I got it down. And, and I don't need, need to give an incredible amount of thought to it. I, I don't need to figure out a new system because I already know the road to take. I, I've already got the plan. I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. And, and we love I got it because I got it means we don't have to give quite as much time to it because we got it. And in a crisis, we don't got it. I don't know what you got in February, but you don't got it now. One of the things I think is healthy of this crisis, I think it brings to a great sense of humility to all of us that, that we're not in control, that we don't always have answers, and we're not always the man. And I think that's just very healthy for me. I think it's healthy for you. I think it's healthy for all of us. And, and I just want to talk to you about the very fact that put behind you the difficulties and put before you the progress. So let me, I'm going to come back to automatic in a moment, but, but let me just make sure I contextualize this right for you so you got it. Booker T. Washington said this. He said, success is not the position that you've arrived at. He said, success is what you had to overcome to get where you are today. So, so Booker T. Washington had this all down. He says, when you look at a person and, and where they have arrived, don't look at that and say they're a success. Look at what they had to overcome to get there. And what happens is the crisis has taken us out of automatic. Now, when we're in automatic, what happens to us? Well, when you're in automatic, when I'm in automatic, we're filled with assumptions. We literally live every day with assumptions. We just, it, well, it's always been this way, and, and it always has worked this way, and, and so it's going to be this way. And so we just kind of go down this automatic assumption trail. Assumptions aren't good. Assumptions don't cause me to ask good questions. Assumptions don't cause me to think. Assumptions don't cause me to reflect. We all take assumptions for granted. And anybody that's in the assumption arena, we take them for granted. So when, 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 what's happened is uh, we've gotten knocked out of automatic. Crisis doesn't let us be an automatic. And so that what happens is we, we, we lose those assumptions. That's a good thing. Well, the other thing that happens when we get out of automatic is we, got, we get kicked out of the very center of our comfort zone. We're kicked out. I mean, it, 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 we're, we're no, we're nobody, nobody right now is looking and saying, you know, I just, I'm right in the middle of my comfort zone. You see, uh, we've, we've been kicked out of that. And, and, and let me also tell you that when we're in automatic, we're not very adaptable. We're not very flexible. We're not in automatic. We're not very hungry. And this crisis has taken us out, out, out of automatic. When we're in automatic, let me tell you, we're going downhill in automatic. You know, you, I, I teach that everything worthwhile is uphill. Let me tell you something. Uphill is not automatic. It's never been automatic. It's not going to be automatic. Downhill is. So when we're in automatic, there's this tendency for us to coast. We, you know, we, we think we're a hotel room with a do not disturb sign on us. I mean, just kind of, I got it. I got it. Please don't disturb me. Wow. So put before you, put, put before you the progress you're making. Let me just say this. I can remember, you know, most of you know that I was a pastor. And when I was in San Diego, we bought 80 acres of ground in Southern California, and we had to get it zoned. I cannot even go into that story because I just want to, you know, it took us 11 years to get it zoned, and it cost us $8.5 million. Okay. Hundreds of meetings, ridiculous red tape. We had a black-tailed gnat catcher that didn't even live on the property. It just landed on the property, and it was an endangered bird. We literally, just to show you the stupidity of people, we had to buy another plot of ground about a mile away, about the size of ours, as a resting place for the black-tailed gnat catcher, since we would be disturbing the environment where the black-tailed gnat catcher every once in a while landed. 
Now, you've got to understand, during this time of 11 years of, are we going to get the land or not? Guess money for the land. In fact, I have to stand in front of the people and say, we need you to help us financially because the financial package was going to be so huge. I, I knew I had to get in front of it. And then I would say, by the way, the sacrifice you're making, we're not even telling you we can buy the land. We, hey, we got, we've got to get it approved. 11 years. Now, okay, just let me be me for a moment and then I'll, I'll kind of go back into nice. If I'd have known that black-tailed neck catcher, that bird was going to cost us so much money and so much time, I'd have just gone out and shot the sucker. Honestly, hey, two years in prison, we could have got on with our life, okay? Now, listen to me. Okay, I'm just having fun with you. Relax, take a pill. Okay, here we go. This is important. I look back at my leadership during those years. And I don't, I can't show you the growth I had during the good times. I can show you growth. We had growth. But we, ra we, 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 we raised $35 million. We, 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 we were in midst of difficulty. And the progress we made, even though it was much smaller progress, was special ground to us. Because that was filled with blood, sweat, and tears. So put behind you the difficulties, because we all have them right now, the crisis, and put before you and appreciate and value the progress. The story I like to tell so often is I was at a conference. We had about 2,500 people listening to you. I was doing a leadership conference, and a guy during the last break I was signing books came up to me, young kid, nice kid. And he just looked at me and said, I've been watching this. This is amazing. I'm learning all these leadership principles. Everybody's enjoying it. He, he said, I've decided I, I, I want to do what you I, I want to do what you do. I said, that's great. I, I like that. I said, just have one question for you. Would you like to do what I did so you can do what I do? You see, that's the question. Some of you are going to come out of this time and you're going to have such respect for yourself. You know, I teach that respect is earned on difficult ground, that moral authority is given when you are leading people through highly difficult, difficult times and, and when you come out on that other side i just i just want you to know that your greatest days of growth as far as what it does for you internally are right now and that internal maximizing of growth will eventually pay off to the external also trust me if it's in here it has to get out there it's just a matter of time number five number five Put behind you the personal benefits and put before you the people benefits. Now, this is kind of close to, you know, put behind you the sales and, and, and put in front of you adding value to people, but, but there's a difference. And let me tell you why I, I give you this point that put behind you the personal benefits. What am I going to get out of this and put, be, put before you the people benefits? And that is, that is that the reason I'm giving you that thought is I was listening to Patrick Lencioni the other day. He had, has a new book out. It's a very good book called Motives. And, and, and Patrick said that um, the question of leadership is this, why do you lead? Now, if you've heard me teach on leadership, I, I talk all the time about how I like to go to a person and say, okay, why do you want to become a leader? And, and Patrick did such a succinct job on this. He said, I always want to know why you want to become a leader because that's going to tell me everything I need to know about your leadership. And he said, basically, there are two reasons to become a leader. One is a reward, and number two is responsibility. And he said, if you're a leader, that you're in it because of the perks of leadership. I mean, oh, my gosh, if I lead, I, I get a parking place, I get a good office, if I lead, I get all the – if you're in it because of the perks of leadership, he said, during a crisis, you won't show up because the perks are gone. But if you're in it for the people, if you're in it for the responsibility of helping lift the load, he said, then all of a sudden, this becomes absolutely huge in your life because this was the moment you were born for. This is the tough time that you help the people have the victory and get the win in their life. We've all heard the, the statement, you know, minor surgeries on you and major surgeries on me. Same surgery, but it's minor if you're having it. It's major if I'm having it. Well, I'm saying, put behind you. Let's just get behind us. All the stuff that would benefit us right now, or what we want, and, and, and let's get re, let's put rewards behind us, and let's put responsibility in, in front of us. Because you see, leaders see more than others see, and they see before others see. I call that the leadership advantage. 
And that's a fact. But because I have that leadership advantage that I see more than you see and I see before you see, I either take that advantage and I put you before me and I serve you. Or I take that advantage and I put me before me and I serve me. So, so put the personal benefits behind, you know, hey, put, put, put the people in front of you. Okay, I'm going to do one more. Um, wow. Um, okay. Here, here's the last one. Okay, there, there are maybe nine or ten of them total, but let's see. I have, yeah, I've got, I've got nine of them. You get six of them, okay? But here's one. that This is just really good. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come back to six. I'm going to give you right now the other three because you're driving, you're going crazy right now. You're saying, wait a minute, I'm getting six out of nine. And I know what melancholics do like that. So, so I, I'm going to give you the other three. I just can't talk about it. But so you, you got your outline when you give to your people. Uh, I'm coming back to number six. Number seven was put behind you, your feelings and put before you, your values. You got to be, you and I have to be value driven right now. Number eight, put behind you the future and put before you today. Now, now that this is, I wish I needed a little context there, but I'm just telling you the best clarity you have right now is today. There's a lot of uncertainty out there and it lists, lists lead today, you know, today matters. And then the last point was put be, put behind you complaining and put before you gratitude. Yeah. Just, just put before you gratitude. It, you, it, 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 very simply right there, gang is it, it, you, you just can't, you can't, you can't moan and lead at the same time. So who wants to follow a moaner? I mean, who wants to get up and say, hey, John's going to moan again today. Wow, won't this be a draw? I'm going to get inspired as he moans. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my, okay, here we go. So let me go back to the last point. And, and this is it. And that is, I want, I want you to put behind you who you were and put before you who you can be. I touched this a little bit earlier, but I'm coming back to it now. When I said, at the end of this crisis, am I going to be better? That's the question. At the end of this crisis, are you going to be better? And uh, when I do learning lunches, I've done learning lunches for 40 years. Once a month, take somebody out to lunch, buy them lunch, bigger, better, faster, smarter than me. I ask them questions. When I do learning lunches, I have seven questions. And one of the questions I ask is, what is the most important lesson you've ever learned in your life? That really just helps me to know what they've gone through and how they've overcome it. Now, I asked that question. I've asked that question a hundred times. And let me tell you something. I get different answers, but every answer I have gotten over 40 years comes out of the same setting. And this is what I don't want you to miss. If I were having a lunch, if I, if, if I were having a lunch with you right now, it's just you and me, the two of us. And I ask you, what's, what's the most important lesson you ever learned out of life? Here's what I know. When you gave me the lesson, the lesson you learned would be out of a dark, difficult time in your life, 100%. I've never had anybody say, you know, the most important lesson I ever learned in life was when I was on top of the mountain and everything was going wonderful and I was just being highly successful. No. They'll say, let me, let me tell you something, John. And they'll take me to a valley. They'll take me to a dark time. They'll take me to a crisis. Because that's what awakens us. That's what gets our attention. Hey, that's what gets us out of automatic. We don't want to be in automatic. It gets us out of automatic, and all of a sudden we realize we aren't in control, and we don't have those answers, and there's a sense of humility that comes in our life, and that's where we learn the greatest lessons of our life. By the way, wisdom, wisdom isn't from somebody that just has a lot of knowledge and reads a lot of books. Wisdom always comes out of very dark crucible times in a person's life. That's where wisdom is birthed. So what am I saying to you today? It's very simple. Many of us are going to look back and say, you know, it was during the coronavirus that some things really began to change in my life. Some values, some priorities. I kind of had a little bit of time to kind of readjust and adjust and make those changes. And that's what I want for you. So what you focus on expands. I love this visually. Put the things you need to look at before you. Put the things that are just going to weight you down and not get you where you want to go. Put them behind you. And God bless you. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson.
thanks for being with us today on the Leadership When It Matters the Most program. I hope John encouraged you in your leadership just like he encouraged me. Our goal in this time of crisis is to come alongside you, add value to you, so you can multiply value to others. If you go to johnmaxwell.com, you'll find free resources, tools that will help you lead in these very unique times. You'll find our podcast, John Maxwell Leadership Podcast, Minute with Maxwell, a daily word that John will bring to you, as well as our leadership blog. All of those resources on johnmaxwell.com, and they are free and ready for you to encourage you, encourage others. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you soon when leadership matters the most.